Despite a wide open start, it is turn 127. Yeah, 127. And Abraham Lincoln's America is officially so far ahead that our choice is increasingly looking like A, maintain war and maybe win, or B, make peace and get stomped by accidental giant death robots later. Hello Legion, this is Adrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Civilization VI in Series 2 of our uncontrolled, I mean controlled chaos meta series, King of Kings. So we are going to start by making a dedication for this Dark Age. We are going to select Hicksunt Draconis again. Although, Heartbeat of Steam is tempting. I do think that the amount of exploration we have ahead of us uh, is going to work to our advantage. I think that will help us guarantee a golden age, a heroic age, in fact. So I have several units here that are ready for promotion, and I want to continue to grant those promotions where possible. This courser, I actually want to have them withdraw because Cardiff has joined the war on the side of America. Hopefully that won't last too long. But... We had these coursers running around and raiding, and hang on, if I move you here, what about here? Okay, that way I can at least keep an eye on Cardiff and see about maybe doing some damage next turn, earning some experience for that courser. But I think I might have some options here also for helping with the loyalty situation in Charleston, because right now Boktree is six so or it was six turns from growing but if i change its focus to growth focus then it'll grow in three turns and that's additional loyalty pressure from up north which could be handy also it looks like we might be able to change policies so that's really quite useful oh we still have the loyalty Ooh. okay never mind we still have that policy in place i could set this up but it would involve taking away Merchant Confederation, which I don't want to do. I want this gold per turn that I'm currently earning. So let's go ahead, first of all, and promote that unit. And then we'll promote this heavy chariot to a knight. And we have enough faith. You know, loyalty-wise, it would actually help to have my religion instilled in Charleston, but Another thing is that if I let my faith build up a little bit more, I need to build more holy sites, to be honest. I haven't really done that a lot this series. If I train a missionary, I can send them to Charleston and potentially, maybe, nah, it wouldn't, it, <laughs> it would not convert that city. We need an apostle for that. Okay. Well, in that case, I think I'm going to go ahead and train another settler in Mashad because we need to make sure that we continue to expand in spite of everything that we have going on. We can build ancient walls in Boktree, but I could also get another builder going. Could also do another trader, which wouldn't be the worst thing. Or I could do another settler for that matter. Settler wouldn't help with the loyalty situation though, because remember in Mashad, I can train a settler and not lose a citizen. In Boktri, that is not the case. So I'm trying to keep that in mind. All right, looks like the monument is done here. So I'm going to go ahead and buy a granary outright in Ray. I have the money for it, so we're going to take advantage of that. And then it seems like probably the next thing that I should build here is a campus district. I don't quite have the money to buy the best tile for it. Oh, yes, I do. Well, no, I don't, but I don't have to buy the best tile for it. I can just place it. So let's place a campus district there in Ray. We're going to place you on production focus or, or on growth focus so that you can, you know, have more citizens and then potentially be building that a little bit faster. There's lots of hills around Ray, so I'm hoping that as the city expands, we're able to use that for production purposes. All right, so wonders continuing to be built. We also haven't been able to do much in the way of heroes this series. Magnus has been taken out in Mashad, so someone's already running around with spies. Can we just discuss how rude that is for a minute? Yeah, three turns until I get him back. All right, Charleston, what can you do?
Unfortunately, one of the annoying things about this city losing loyalty is that we are going to face a situation where its production kind of grinds to a halt. We've been getting it building faster in the past little while, and now that's about to change for the worse. Let me see about maybe getting rid of some of these woods. I've already done it to a certain extent, but I think I can keep going. It's tough, though, because I would prefer to do it this turn and I have to wait till next turn. So what could I, like, sink a turn into in the meantime and not feel bad about? Huh, <laughs> a bomb bird, maybe? Oh, I forgot we had that upgrade. Holy crap. Hello. Hello. I forgot we had that upgrade. Stop everything. Let's go ahead and promote that. There's some error score for us right there. We don't quite have enough to do it again, but we will next turn. All right, well, I'm not going to train another one. I think, like, there's a part of me that just wants to keep building builders. I think maybe another trader is for the best, though. Let's do that. We're not at trade capacity, and we're currently kind of paying the price for it. Okay, yeah, we definitely are not doing anything against Cardiff with those coursers. Because that is a musketman core. And that's kind of annoying that there's already core units running around. But it is what it is. It's Emperor Difficulty. And I wanted this. <laughs> Let's just remind everybody at this point. I asked for this. No one told me to do it. I was just like, eh. I'm having too easy of a time with King. Let's go back up to Emperor. And then Abe Lincoln himself just shows up and goes, Hold my beer, sir. You think you've got this, do you? Uh, no. No, see, keeping you at war with me is like the one thing that is maintaining any semblance of sanity. All right, so... Hang on, I have an idea here. I'm going to put this pikeman... Well, first of all, we're going to upgrade them to a pike and shot. Second of all... Let's see what I can do here. We're going to move this knight right there. We're going to take the Wounded Courser and actually kind of take them back into home territory. I'm going to do that with both Coursers, in fact. And we have this Immortal here. Now, remember that the Immortal is not... Yeah, if I place this Bombard here, then they will be able to attack. This Immortal is an outdated unit at this point. It really honestly needs to be upgraded. I'm going to go ahead and move that trebuchet there, and we can start moving other ranged units into position as well. Most importantly, hang on. Move that one there. I'll keep you in place. I'll put you there. See, this is forcing me to slightly reconfigure because he's finally sending a unit from this general direction. It's still a tough angle to attack from, but I'll take it. All right, choose production. Zronka, what did you... Oh, you built the aqueduct. Very nice. So this city's going to be in much better shape now. Can I build... Okay, no, I can't build a caravel here yet. We're still working on that. Ooh, there's a very nice campus slot here, but I don't have the gold for it at present. There's not a commercial hub. I mean, there is, but not one that I want to take. What about a holy site? <laughs> They're all too expensive, except for where the Paradeza is sitting. And I need that thing. That's giving me culture per turn right now. It's kind of frustrating. Let's do a trader in Zeronka as well. We need to get up to trade cap. All right, now the game is saying I have fresh deals. Let's take a look at what I might be able to do here. It looks like... Wait a minute. How am I doing resource-wise?
All right, so we have amber, cotton, incense, olives, silver, tobacco, whales, and wine. Amber, cotton, incense, olives, silver, tobacco, whales, and wine. Okay, we already have tobacco. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that. All right, so we've arranged for an additional lecture resource there. I can also promote my scouts. Haven't forgotten about that. Hopefully Cardiff doesn't get any funny ideas with attacking Pasargade, because I really don't have the ability to defend it right now. City-states normally act more defensively. Okay, saw that coming a mile away. Okay, so if I move you here, good. I want you to swap positions. There we go. So what I'm going to do at this point... I'm going to give the field cannon something else to shoot at by placing the knight right there. There's another field cannon and a settler. Ooh, if I'm careful with this, I might be able to snag that settler. I'm going to try not to lose this bombard in the process. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead. This is a little bit of a bold move, because I'm still out just out everything by these units, to tell you the truth. All right, so we can upgrade this Immortal to a Man-at-Arms, and I'm going to do that. As much as it hurts, I think at this point it makes sense to do that upgrade. All right, Pasargade, you're going to need a lot of things. Do you have an amenities problem? No, there's just not enough amenities nearby. So, almost, to tell you the truth, what Pasargade needs, we need to do... Yeah, I think this is probably the next best option here. If I put an entertainment complex there, this should be... It'll be supportive of the core three cities and help with amenities. We have this brand new builder as well. Let's take a look here. We've got this entertainment complex that we're building... Let's see, that's a Paradeza, so we can't do another one there. I could get a mine going on this hilltop, but I think I'd rather... I still don't have... Yeah, let's do a lumber mill there in those woods. That's one thing I haven't done yet. Okay, I'm going to put this Courser on standby to see what Abraham's unit does. Good old Abraham. All right. Now, here's an interesting moment. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go into the queue. We're going to remove that from the queue for the time being. And now I'm going to remove these woods. And what we can now do here in Charleston is we can build an industrial zone. Which will support the nearby cities and help with production in general. Rebellion is now showing 25 turns away because Bok Tree has grown. New Orleans still has a while before it grows, but we have a builder almost done, and that will help it grow even faster. I think once it has a fifth pop, or a fifth citizen, if I can use that term, 
<laughs> mixing up my Firaxis and my Paradox terms a little bit. I think once that is in place, I think we'll be fine in Charleston, maybe. I'll have to pay very close attention to it. Okay, this next turn is going to be pretty consequential for our Bombard here, because I've just given the Field Cannon something else to shoot at, but I'm not sure what they're going to do. They're going to fire on the Bombard. Okay. Interesting. We shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. Okay, so now I have all three of the basic government types unlocked for the second tier. If I give myself a second... We'll see, I, I'm actually losing... Let's take a look at policies for a second. Right now I have four military policies to make everything work. So any choice that's a reduction, yeah, that's that's not going to go over well. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. I do have other policies, I think, which could be potentially helpful. But, uh, I mean, most of the upgrades are done. So maybe I could get away with... So what I'm thinking is, if I... Switch to Merchant Republic. I have a second, what are these called? Diplomatic slot. I have a second diplomatic slot, which will allow me to place one of these. Specifically, the one that provides more loyalty for cities with governors in them. So that'll help with Charleston. And it could potentially keep the city from rebelling, which is good. But I would have to give up my production bonus towards walls and my production and my gold discount from unit upgrades which I don't like either of those ideas okay so let's see what I can get away with here I'm going to go ahead and attack alright I've had an idea I think I can keep the bomber alive By firing this turn, getting a, getting it a promotion. Uh-oh. Okay, that didn't work the way I planned. Alright, so the crossbowman against the field cannon would kill it. Oh, that did not work the way I planned. Once again, like, I thought the pike and shot was actually going to eliminate the field cannon, but it didn't. I'm hoping that the damage I've done to it, I mean, I could definitely hit it hard and potentially keep the... By doing damage to it and reducing its health, it'll do less damage to the bomber, but I don't know if that'll save it. <sighs> okay. Oh, man, this is a lot. All right, let's... Let me try this. I'm going to move the Immortal. Yep. 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 Can't do it. Can't do it. Not quite good enough. Let's have this Immortal stay put. That Trebuchet stay put. That Crossbowman stay put. All right. What can I do? I can't move the Bombard. I can't move the Crossbowman into a position that's actually... Now, it says movement cost one here. Is that true? I don't know if I believe you, because why would it be just movement cost one? Because I'm stepping out of the city and there's a, I mean, there's always a bonus. I just don't know if I'll have enough to attack and I don't want to expose my most leveled up crossbowman. That's almost worse than losing the bumbard at this point. All right, yeah, I'm just going to attack with the spike and shot. That's what's going to happen. All right, I'm going to move, <laughs> I'm going to sneak a little bit closer with this courser just to see what happens. Because if I can gank that settler somehow from Abe, I'm going to laugh so hard. I don't know where he thinks he's going with a brand new city, but at this point, even if he settles it, I'll take it. Like, what do you think you're doing, buddy? 
Like, putting a settler up there? Like, yes, by all means, give me another city. I will happily add to your war weariness anytime. It would be my pleasure. Okay, let's... Ooh, so this is the ability to build a, a spy. Mercantilism gives us the privateer. Yeah, let's go for the spy first. It sounds like we need that. Also, how are we doing on Mashad? Can I reinstate? Yes, I can. Let's reinstate that governor. So we don't lose that citizen there. Damn it. All right, well, we lost the bomber. That's Emperor Difficulty for you. Lost the Bombard, and it doesn't look like we're really going to be able to do anything too much. Yeah. I, I guess what I'll do is attack with the Immortal here, because they should finish it off. And get that promotion. Alright, so let's back off. That's a real shame. I'll have to build another one at some point. I'm going to keep that courser there just in case they continue to flirt with moving that settler near me. I am going to upgrade this unit to a skirmisher so we can defend against that pike and shot. We're going to build a lumber mill here. Your knowledge of mass production has advanced considerably. Nice. I'm really curious what he's planning to do with that settler. It's saying the rebellion is going to occur in 24 turns. At this point, I'm not too worried about it. All right. We've gained a lot of faith in the past few turns. Plus two gold from the fishing boat improvement. All naval and embarked units can navigate ocean tiles. Nice. All right. So this immortal, let's give them... Yeah, let's do amphibious because that kind of moves down towards the promotion that gives them a bonus for fighting in a district. Okay, it looks like Cardiff backed that unit out of my territory, which was the smart move. Well done, Cardiff. I'm going to go ahead and move this builder over here and see if I can get a mine built on top of this particular hill. Abe is rebuilding his army. That's a problem. Gunpowder! Hey, let's go ahead and go for that so that we don't feel quite so inferior. Now, Boktree has some clear opportunities to become a more consequential city. I'm going to just do farms up here and go nuts. Meanwhile, another thing I think I could do... Is there a good spot for Campus District here? Not really. Theater Square? Not really. Industrial Zone? Mm hmm? Could be. You know what? I'm going to do it. Anything to increase production in my cities, given what we're up against with these enemy empires. All right, so let's promote that trebuchet. And we will have a bit more niter, or we need a bit more niter in order to promote the other one, but we're getting there. Or upgrade, rather, that trebuchet. The world is ours for the taking, and take it you have. Yeah, dang skippy. Dang, Skippy, your knowledge of printing has advanced considerably. Nice. Your knowledge of astronomy has advanced considerably. Nice. We're still not really earning era score for anything. Anything at all. It's bad. It's real bad. We do, whoever have, however, have the industrial zone here. If I were to be able to build the Taj Mahal in this city, oh, let me tell you. Tell you what, I want you to start building a builder, and we've got some woods to chop down. I think I'm going to try and go for the Taj Mahal. I'm going to go for it. They can't stop me. I don't know who they are, but they can't. Actually, they is probably America, to be completely fair. Yeah, we need to keep upgrading those as much as I hate to give up the ranged attack ability that I have with them. 
All right, let's move this courser back down. Having those two units side by side will help. Ooh, a Paradeza. Yeah, let's do that. We need to take advantage of the fact that we are able to build those as Persia. All right, so the industrial zone is almost done in Charleston. The population is going to grow in four turns. New Orleans is going to grow in six turns. The builder's done in one turn. Yeah, so I definitely have fewer concerns. I'm curious about something, though. I am curious about this. Will you give me St. Louis? No, right, he's not willing to give up St. Louis. I wonder if he'd give up Philadelphia. Nope. He's not willing to give up a city. Okay, well, I tried. I've been curious about that, and I tried. Yeah, the quarry improvement's going to receive plus one production. We don't have that many quarries, though. That's one thing about this particular playthrough so far. Okay, can I move you there? No, I can't. It's going to be another... It's going to be next turn. It's one thing about this playthrough so far. Like, I've had a lot of territory around me, but I don't have... When it comes to, like, stone... Like, yeah, there's, see, there's stone here, but I don't have stone, like, near my cities. No. Under no circumstances, sir. I just gave you an offer, and you didn't, you weren't interested in that. An unmet player has finished building Potala Palace. A diplomat is a man who always remembers a woman's birthday, but never remembers her age. Ha, indeed. So, resident embassy, we can now set those up with relevant parties. We can declare holy wars and liberation wars. Not that that matters too much. And we can construct spies. All right, so this is a really big deal. First of all, there's some silver. Let's see. First of all, let's establish an embassy with Russia. You don't have silver. I have an idea. Hang on. What if I gave you the extra incense too? All right, that doesn't really change much. Okay, so he's going to give me seven gold per turn for this. For some of his extra resources. And that should, in theory, help. Just by providing additional amenities and helping cities continue to grow. All right, let's go for mercantilism, mainly for the camp improvements bonus and for lumber mills buildable in rainforest. Okay, so... Yeah, workshop. I need that city to be productive as soon as possible. That would be amazing. Not really a campus spot here. Not really a theater spot either. In some ways, you know what? Yeah, let's just start building medieval walls in New Orleans. This is We're still at war with America. We can't forget that. Those border cities, I need to make sure I hold them because I can't maintain what I'm doing right now with driving up America's war exhaustion if I don't defend the cities that I'm holding. If I lose the cities I'm holding, it, it's done. The game is up. So I'll do what I can to hold on to them. All right, so it looks like Magnus has been reestablished in Mashad. Has anyone else been taken out? Nope, we're good. Go to the next turn. All right, so we've got some religious shenanigan rehabbing, including in my capital, I just noticed. 
I just noticed that. That's kind of annoying. I don't even know whose religion that is. Oh no, now it's not religious anymore. Okay, well I can't... The, the problem now is that unless I build... Yeah, see, I've got enough faith to buy some of these essential buildings, which I need to. Let's go for the art museum. For the extra culture per turn. That's where we're struggling the most. This settler, meantime... Why don't you... Let's see. If I put a city here, it would definitely stop Abe from expanding farther and give me more defensive territory in the area. The trouble is, it would be very difficult for me to get it growing quickly. It's more advantageous to get something going over here. Or even over here. And we've got planes here and an oasis that we could connect. Yeah, see, I really like that idea. Let's go ahead and... It's going to take nine turns, but we're going to send that settler way over there to the, to the other side of New Orleans. All right, well, now... Crap. I need to find some way... We basically need to... Redouble our efforts to actually build holy sites, because I'm paying the price now for not having built holy sites. I don't know which religions. It looks like Eastern Orthodoxy. Who founded Eastern Orthodoxy? I haven't even seen... Russia. Okay. Oh, yeah, of course it was Russia. So... Yeah, let's go ahead and get the walls built in the shot. We're behind schedule on that. Okay, so can I build a caravel here? Oh, man, that's a really long production time. Are you serious? Like, that's how long it's going to take? You can't do it any faster. Oh, yes, you can, actually. Hold on. Stop everything. If you trade with Mashad starting now, and I keep you on growth focus, actually, if I put you on production focus, now I want you to build a caravel. So, that caravel is still going to take a long time to build. And hopefully we can get it done a little bit sooner than that. But, all right, Paradeza there. Oh no, I was going to build a, a mine there. Hmm. I could still build one there. It's fine. I mean, I need... I just went for the recommendation, but what I really needed was the mine. Yeah, well, it's too late now. Not going to worry about it. That was not what I meant to build there. Alright, I will be able to upgrade this trebuchet soon. Agmatana, you can build a holy site, and I think you need to. So why don't you go ahead and get one started there. Use some gold to make that happen, unfortunately, but... I think I can take that L. Now, do I have wine yet? I don't know if... Hang on, let me see if I do. I think I do. I remember looking at... Yeah, I do have wine. It's actually owned in Pasargadea. Oh yeah, of course it is. Yeah, we've got wine right there. But I could make it tradable if I improve that. Or I could go improve that Niter up by Ray, which I think is probably one of the most important things I could do right now, just to make sure I continue to have Niter income. So let's go ahead and send the builder up there to do that. We're going to improve those pasture, or that pasture there. Holy crap, are we at a 35-minute mark? All right, well... It's almost that time, I guess. Charleston is saying it's going to rebel in 13 turns. I don't think it will, though, because I think next turn it's going to swing the other direction. And New Orleans is going to grow in three turns. I think we're fine. All things considered. Okay, listen. Listen, you want peace? Give me St. Louis. Refuse deal. If that's what you want. Now, 
Now, interestingly, they have an apostle that's trying to set foot out here. If they are dumb enough <laughs> to bring that apostle onto land here, I'm going to immediately kill it with my knight. All right, so Charleston is still rebelling in 15 turns. We're going to need New Orleans to grow, basically. I'm really surprised at this. This is the Dark Age working against us. And notice we're not really earning any era score from anything we're doing. And one of the reasons for that is we're not ahead in anything. You tend to get error score for being like first to everything. But when you start to graduate to Emperor, to Emperor difficulty, you lose that advantage in a lot of ways. Yeah, I do want to go for the for the Taj Mahal here in Hagmatana, but this holy site needs to be built. Because if I don't train a religious unit belonging to my religion, I'll I'll lose my capital. And I won't be able to get it back. That's my only holy site right now. So let's take this builder and send them over to this wheat. All right, next turn. Let's see if he's dumb enough. Who declared war? Akkad? All right. So once again, every city-state and its mother... The real use of gunpowder is to make all men tall. All right, so now we have access to musketmen. All right, so I can upgrade this scout to a skirmisher, which, frankly, it, it already should have been upgraded to a skirmisher, but... All right, so you're going up to the Niter. It's going to take five more turns. All right, well, we're at the beginning of turn 139. I want to keep going right now, but I do need to stop this episode here. Charleston is going to rebel in 14 turns. And it's not growing anymore because its loyalty pressure has annihilated that. So when New Orleans grows, that should help. I don't know if it's going to help enough, though. I really don't know if it's going to help enough. I don't know if one population growth is going to change that. You know, we might get a new city going over here and that'll help, but that's not going to be... Ugh. Yeah, it's Dark Age loyalty pressure for you. So, yeah, we'll wrap this one up here. In the next one, I am going to keep trying to hold on to Charleston. I did not see it going this way. I thought we would have this locked down after these cities grew and after Bok Tree hit 9 pop. But that hasn't panned out. And now Charleston is... We're, we're ending this episode with Charleston in the same situation that it was in at the beginning of the episode, which is frustrating. Obviously, we've made progress elsewhere, and we've continued to work towards, for example, getting the caravel built here. And we're going to have more population in Zoranka soon. And we have a lot more that we can build that can continue to improve the situation up here. I think the plan is mostly working. But again, if I don't hold these cities, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Especially, you know, I've been working to get this workshop built here. And this is the crappy thing about loyalty pressure, because we're now at less than 50% loyalty. Look at that. 35 turns left until it finishes. And the only way that's going to change is if we get the full production power of the city back by having it be fully loyal. One of the ways we could do that is having our religion in the city. Unfortunately, the only place where I could train religious units that could help make that happen has been converted by our ally of all people. So that's, I just realized that, and that's kind of annoying, but that's neither here nor there. That's just what we have to live with with the way this particular series is going at the moment. But overall, I'm still happy with what we're accomplishing, given that Abe is, I mean, his culture is starting to climb, but he would be doing so much better right now if he didn't have to deal with us completely annihilating his amenity totals by killing his units so repeatedly. And we've only lost the one unit. The, that will add to our war weariness, unfortunately. And I was really trying not to lose any units. But overall, things are going well. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. If it's not your first time or even your second, look for the join button to access unique emotes, badges, and other perks. New episodes are coming out every day but Monday at 11 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time. And comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.